All right, today we are going to look at the Dirty Dozen, not not the movie, and it is just a coincidence. I'm I'm actually taping this on Veterans Day. Thank you to all the veterans out there. I'm Mark McKay. Welcome to Sage Smart Solutions. Please join us weekly as we learn new and exciting ways to protect your assets and retire tax free. I for for years I was involved with a um, a local homeless shelter. And, and part of the, the operation, we actually had a veteran's house um, that, that, that beds were reserved specifically for veterans. But I always loved going over there um, around Veterans Day or the day before because these guys, and some of these guys were, were big old boys, but they, uh, they, they had a game plan because on Veterans Day, a lot of the, uh, the Golden Corrals, the Sirloin Stockade, you know, buffet type places would have free food for veterans. And, and these guys had a system, and um, I, I just loved how excited they would get. You know, and it, and it meant a lot to them. Um, so um, we, we've also, we just recently learned, a um, friend of the show, we, we had him on the radio show a while back, but one of the last two survivors of the uh, USS Arizona, which... Um, you know, if you remember, was, was the story in Jaws where he talks about they, uh, I don't have the details in front of me, but um, for some reason, I, th I think it had to do with, uh, you know, the, the Enola Gay, the um, Hiroshima and Nagasaki. They had codes on there, so they couldn't radio for help, and these guys sat there in shark-infested waters for three days, um, just like in, in Jaws when he's telling the story. But uh, we, we lost uh, one of the last two, Cletus Lebo, um, amazing guy, amazing storyteller, um, I, I've got to go back and find that, that interview. Anyway, what we're going to talk about today is the dirty dozen. The, the IRS sends out a kind of a watch list of things to look out for of what they, they call tax avoidance schemes. And um, it's, it's not just these people are trying to rip you off, but if you listen to them, you might get audited. You know, so let's, let's they, they, we're not going to get through all 12 today. Um, but what I wanted to do was we're going to start with the first four. They, they, they broke them in, in into three segments, but I thought the first one was um, the most interesting because I wasn't sure what some of these things were. I didn't really know the specifics. Um, but uh, if you've ever run across one of these, send me a, send me a comment and, and let me know. Um, the, the first one you will have. Um, so that's, that's a CRAT or Charitable Remainder Annuity Trust. And, and this is something that, that um, is, is fairly common um, in especially or exclusively in the, um, the plan giving. So if you want to make a donation, um, let's say you're about to sell a piece of property and you, you want the, the part of that to go to um, your church. And, you know, one, because you like your church and two, because you need to reduce the amount of the taxes. So with the Charitable Remainder Annuity Trust, um, what, and I'm not giving tax advice. I'm not telling anyone that any of these strategies are good or bad. This is what the IRS has said, be on the lookout for. So Charitable Remainder Annuity Trust, if you have looked at this type of a structure because you would like to donate an appreciated asset, contact us, contact us, contact me. We have a better way. Let us put it down on paper for you. You can compare it side by side and, you know, maybe not go down the road that the IRS says is, is definitely a red flag. So basically you, you put the, uh, you donate the, um, the appreciated property to a trust and they sell the, the property inside the trust. To, and then they, they sell it to the charity or donate it to the charity. The proceeds they go and they use to buy a single premium immediate annuity, which so that would be, you know that you can get a, an income stream for 10 years or 20 years. And a lot of times we'll do um, an estate equalization strategy with this um, or, or a similar design where you're donating a $2 million piece of property that's got one and a half million dollars of, of appreciation on it um, so you, so you get the deduction from the, from the big donation, but then you, you create an income stream from that, some of which is taxable, but most of it is just return of investment. And, and so you'll see there that, um, you only have to pay taxes on a small portion of it. So it, it, it is, it is tax, it, it, 
it, it is a very beneficial strategy. You just need to be aware when you're going into these things. Um, but but it, it allows it allows you to um, donate the, the the appreciated asset without having to sell it yourself or recognize that capital gain. Um, but like I said, if you would like us to put together a plan that is a better strategy for this and that can put more money into your pocket, more money into the charity's pockets, more money into your kids' pockets. So that's that's where I was going. They 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 take the the income stream from the annuity. And they'll purchase a typically a, an indexed universal life or, or a you know a, a high death benefit um, policy to replace that asset. So they think, oh, you know, I'd like to give the church two million dollars, but then you know I'd also like to make sure that my grandkids, you know, are not squeezed too hard by the price of college. So it it it, it it's a way to. Um, to replace that asset for the next generation on a very tax efficient basis, I, I, I have to say. But there are better ways than, than the crat. So this is one that, that I had to kind of fresh my, refresh in my memory. Uh, refresh? Refresh? That uh, is a treaty benefit for pensions. And so this is really, uh, I just, I, I picture the lawyers that come up with some of these things. And, and, and I like the, 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 the mental gymnastics of it. And, and the looking at the rules and, and the ways that we can make the most out of the tax advantages that are there that are built into the IRS code. But when you see some of these things that are really going against the nature of the laws, I've got a snoring pug over here. Um, so if you hear something, it's not a dragon. He's only this big. But uh, so a treaty benefit for pensions is basically the, the with this treaty, they, they say, okay, we will honor the... The U.S. says it will honor the tax advantages of other countries, you know, basically their, their retirement accounts. So what happens is you get people taking advantages. And in this case, um, a lot of the, the, the cases are in Malta, uh, but they, they make a contribution. But the, the issue is that the local government, you know, one, the, the, the person making the, the contribution and taking, you know, or getting the tax free growth, um, may not really have any interest or, or, or connection to that country, in the, you know, in this case, Malta. Um, and, and then the other thing is that the country itself may not put the kind of limitations that would be necessary for like an ERISA-backed um, plan in the United States. So uh, it's, it's really a way of gaming the system. I'm sure that uh, people who have run across this are well aware of how aggressive a, a tax avoidance strategy it is. Um, so I don't want to, you know, comment too much. One, I, I've, I've, I've only heard of these things. I've not run across one of these where, you know, somebody showed me that it worked and, you know, here's my check and this is what we did and here's the IRS, you know, we've, you know, I just haven't run across that one. So foreign captive insurance. This is another one where I, I you know, kind of feel like um, they, they, they looked at these strategies that are designed to make businesses work better, to give people retirement incentives. And, you know, they, they found a way to, uh, you know, cheat the system sometimes. Uh, but, but this would be if um, a, a, you, you've got a, a, you know, a business owner that, um, you know, typically is going to be just a few partners, but they, they, they enter into these, um, insurance arrangements with, in, in, in this case, a lot of them are in Puerto Rico, or it can be foreign corporations, but it allows them to actually don't deduct the cost of the insurance that it's buying for specialty purposes. Um, and, and there's a lot of, lot of area for, um, misuse in, in, in this type of a structure. And, and, and what the IRS is looking for is that You've got implausible risk covering. So you say, okay, well, we have to deduct the $272,000 that we need for manatee collision insurance for our cargo. You know, I don't, I don't really know <laughs> what types of schemes these guys are trying to pull. But, you know, the, the IRS is on to it. Um, so this is another one that by the time you've gotten to, to some of the details, you're probably pretty aware that... Um, your tax guy's fairly aggressive and, and 
proceed accordingly. Monetized installment sales. So this is um, just another case of game in the system, but uh, it allows for the disposition of a highly appreciated piece of property. And, and, and the plan is, okay, we go in here and we know what we're going to, what price we're going to sell it for, but we're going to bring in a third party. They're going to take over the property. They're going to sell it to the buyer. I'm going to get essentially the same amount, but as a, it's like I loaned the buyer the money. And so my payments are coming back to me in the form of a non-recourse unsecured loan. So if those, those words come up and there are some, there's some strategies that, that very legitimately lose, use non-recourse loans, especially when you're talking about um, IRAs or, you know, other qualified retirement accounts. Um, there, there are very specific rules as to when they can, you know, basically hold debt. So monetized installment sales is just another way to get around that, that some high net worth individuals in particular, um, are, are getting around the disposition of highly appreciated assets. So there are more, uh, that, that was just kind of the, the, the first four. And I thought those were interesting cause I didn't, you know, I couldn't have told you off, off the top of my head what a couple of those were. I, you know, I, I, I kind of understood the general theme of them. But um, we have some strategies, so you don't have to mess with this. Let's set you up a tax-free retirement. And then when you need money, you don't have to go look at an appreciated property. You can put that in trust and leave it to the grandkids or, you know, deal with it however. Donate it in, you know, call us. Let us show you the most efficient way to donate these highly appreciated properties. Um, the, the next four that the IRS issued a release, and this, this was, this was uh, information that was sent out in um, June and over the summer, but we just finished up tax season and we are now approaching what moves can we make at the end of 2022 to reduce the taxes on our 2022 tax returns. So uh, they, they're going to look at, uh, we'll, we'll talk about this in a future video, but consumer focused fraud. So this is more of the mom and pa, you know, I got an email from the IRS saying I need to contact them by Tuesday or they're going to garnish my wage wages. Or, you know, you've qualified for a PPP loan that da 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 and, you know, you can deduct this that type of thing. The other thing that, that we're going to focus on and some of these that, um, or not that we're going to focus on, but we'll cover were, were ones that we just covered. But, uh, these are, these are some more activities that are targeting high net worth individuals. Digital assets is going to be big, obviously. Um, it's going to be interesting to see if there's ta tax harvesting strategies with, you know, the, the, the debacle that, that cryptocurrencies have had for the past nine months. Um, but, but it also involves the use of, of offshore accounts. You know, we, we probably all knew that one guy that, uh, you know, in the eighties was one of the first people we knew to have a jet and it's cause he was spending 51% of his time in St. Thomas or whatever. Be careful, be careful, be careful, protect your assets, retire tax free. Please look for the link below to watch our master class. You'll learn something. And if nothing else, you'll learn something. So after that, schedule a strategy session. We'll spend 15, 30 minutes on a Zoom call. Decide if it's worth putting together the specifics for a plan. Let me design a plan for you to retire tax-free. Protect your assets. Take market volatility out of the equation. Take rising taxes out of the equation. Have a great week.